Hi, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy, and this is the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along. In this video, we're gonna talk about quilting pinwheel blocks. We're gonna learn how to use the quilting to break up bigger spaces, to create secondary effects, and I'll even share how to make your ruler fit larger or smaller spaces. So, let's get to it. If I see this all as one block, then I'm gonna use all these wonderful seams as the perfect markings for a motif. We've seen smaller motifs earlier in the challenge, but now we're gonna be fitting it into a much larger area. Starting from one of the outer seams, I'm gonna quilt a line that curves into the center and on out to the other side. And this shape is really nothing special. I mean, we've seen it a lot during the challenge. And I could continue working my way around and get a beautiful curvy motif. But since we have different fabric colors, I think I'm gonna change it up a bit. And then the lighter fabrics, I'm gonna do straighter lines just to kind of highlight those two different pieces. The problem with changing it up, however, is you might end up opposite from where you wanna be. If I'm gonna continue this design around the whole block, I need to end up on the opposite side. So I'm gonna use stitching in the ditch to get me there. I could stitch along this imaginary seam or I could stitch along these seams. It really doesn't matter as long as I get to where I'm going. I will say that one determining factor is how bulky that center seam is. If I piece the block and I've not ironed it perfectly, then I might go along the outside instead. And again, quilt my line that curves to the center and on out to the other side. Since some of those curves are a little bit longer, it's okay if I stop and reposition my hands. Even if the curve isn't perfectly smooth, as long as it's somewhat close, it's gonna look fine. Now that I kind of have an idea of how it's gonna go together, I'm gonna repeat that in all the blocks. But if you find you're still struggling with those longer curves, here's two tips to help you out. If I need to reposition my hands, I like to do it where the two lines are crossing. That way, if I have any smaller stitches as I take off again, it's not gonna be as noticeable since I have that other line to help cover it up. Secondly, if the thought of quilting those longer curved lines freaks me out, I'll use a ruler. I'm gonna use my Taj ruler to create the shape that I've just quilted. However, it's a little too long for the short line and it's a little too short for the long line, but I'm gonna show you how I like to kind of um, finagle it just a bit to make it work. I'm gonna put the needle in position at one of the points, then I'm gonna kind of slide it back and forth until I find it's in a good spot. What I'm looking for is down here. I wanna make sure there's about a quarter of an inch space in between the center and the edge of my ruler. You can tell I'm not using the whole thing because the point's extending past it. I may have paid for the whole ruler, but I don't have to use that whole line. Once I have it in place, then I can quilt along that ruler getting to the center. Now I have the opposite problem on the second part of the triangle. The side of my Taj ruler is too short to fit that whole line. So what I'm gonna need to do is to get started along the ruler, then reposition and continue along. If I have to do something like that, what I'll usually do is quilt along the ruler, but I'll stop before I get to the furthest point. I'll reposition and continue along. Once I see that now I've repositioned enough that it's long enough, then I can continue that line. I'm gonna quilt along the ruler, just a little bit, and then reposition. I'm kind of working in little bits. And once I reposition enough that I have about a quarter of an inch between the point and the edge of the block, then I know I can stop moving it and then quilt along the whole thing. Let's turn around so you can see what that looks like. And you can tell even though I've had to move it a couple times, it's still gonna make it fit perfectly into that line. This is such good news, right? That means all the rulers that you have laying around, you can make them work for blocks of all sizes. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this motif. There's so many different ways you can quilt motifs. The possibilities are endless. Another way I like to quilt pinwheel quilts is to pretend that some of these triangles are little pinwheels. I think it's fun and whimsical and lets me not take my quilting so seriously. If I decide I want the white triangles to be the little pinwheels, I'll quilt a straight line that goes from the furthest corner to the middle. The inner triangle will be part of my pinwheel and in the other side of the triangle, I'll add some straight echo lines just to flatten it out. I can use a ruler to quilt the straight lines or do some back and forth lines. I just really wanna flatten out that area so that the littler pinwheel comes out. Sometimes I don't use a ruler to give me a straight line. I use it almost like a handle to help me move the quilt. Once I have the background area quilted, I can travel along the seam back to the center and then quilt my little pinwheel. Since I want that littler triangle to really stand out, I'm gonna quilt it less densely. That's gonna help it pop out from the background. I'm gonna quilt just a simple wedge shape in that triangle. Now that I'm in the center, I can go ahead and quilt the bigger triangle and I'll use the same kind of wedges I quilted in the smaller triangle. Now it's time to work on my next white triangle. 
I'm going to stitch along the ditch to get to the middle of the longest side, then quilt a line directly across to the furthest point. And just like I've done before, I'm going to fill in the outer part of the triangle with some straight lines until I get to the edge. And once that side's filled in, I'm going to use traveling again to get back to the center so I can quilt the other half of that triangle. If you don't have a ruler or don't feel comfortable machine quilting with one, you can freehand it. Just take your time and work smoothly and slowly. And now I'm in the center, I can go ahead and quilt that smaller triangle and then continue doing the same thing in all the pieces until I get to the beginning. I'm quilting these designs with purple thread so you can really see what I'm doing. However, if I were doing this on an actual quilt, I would use a matching thread color. It takes a little bit longer than the other design since I have a little bit more traveling and echoing. So I want to make sure I do it in one of my favorite blocks or for somebody that I really like. In this next pinwheel design, I'm going to use the quilting to break up the space and make it a little smaller. I'm going to pick a spot about an inch inside and quilt up to the next seam. Then I'm going to change direction and then echo the top side of my block. Of course I'm going to love my slim ruler because I designed it, but I really love how the reference lines are in black and white, so the white shows up in the darker fabrics and the darker shows up on the whiter fabrics. It's so nice. Once I hit that diagonal seam, I know it's time to change directions, so it makes it really easy to figure out where to stop. I'm basically quilting a little square inside of my pinwheel. And I want to end where I started so I have the first part of my design. Now I'm going to go right into quilting my inner pinwheel, and I'm going to do a basic continuous curved design. And we've seen this already, where I'm quilting a line that curves to the center, out to the corner, back into the center, and continue my way around the block. I'm keeping it nice and basic in the inside because we're going to add a little bit more detail in the outside of the border. And since I have my lines already perfectly marked out, it makes it so much easier. This kind of curvy, continuous line motif is a lot easier to quilt in a smaller area than it is in the bigger block. This design is really helpful if you're working with larger pinwheels because we're basically using the quilting to break it down into a smaller piece. I still have the pinwheel shape in the center, but it's a lot easier to manage now. And just like that, I end up where I started and I have the center of my block beautifully finished. The possibilities are limitless in the outer edge. But before I pick those designs, I want to decide how happy I am with the center block. Do I like how it turned out and want to show it off? If so, I'm going to add an echo line around it. So to do that, I'm just going to travel back along the seam about a quarter of an inch, then echo the square I first quilted. I know we've seen echoing a lot, but this is such an easy way to show off the main element. Now I could have added this echo line first, but I wanted to quilt the center first to make sure I liked it before I started putting echo lines. If I would quilted that center bit and didn't like how it turned out, I wouldn't be echoing it right now. Now I can start adding my filler, and I think I'll add different designs in the different colors. So starting here, I want to do wishbones. But I don't have to do the same design around the whole outer edge. I have all these beautiful markings to help divide it up. So I'm going to start quilting wishbones, but I'm only going to fill it in that dark blue segment. Noticing that they get smaller as I get to the corner because I'm just filling in this one little space. In this next section, I can put something different, and I think I'll just do some ribbon candy. It really doesn't matter which two designs you pick, just pick two different designs and alternate between them. I mean, seriously, isn't that adorable? The wishbone and the ribbon candy are similar enough that they don't really stand out from each other too much, but they're different enough to really show the different pieces of the fabric. I do have to tell you, one of the bonuses of quilting the block this way is I don't have to worry about turning the corner with the design. I fill in the area and move right onto my next one. It kind of takes some of the thinking out of it, and I love it. I have a seam right here dividing the block from this outer strip. This is one of those techniques that you can come up with endless variations by using different designs in the outer ring, adding more echo lines, or quilting a completely different design in the center. Well, I'm going to continue doing that, working my way around the block, until I return back to where I started.
And when I'm finished, I have a design that uses the quilting to break that space up into smaller areas while using the seams as reference lines. Okay, you know what's coming now. Are you ready for your challenge? If you're quilting along with me on the custom panel for this challenge, go ahead and quilt the pinwheel blocks on your quilt. Of course, you could use the designs that I've shown you or come up with your own variations. It's totally up to you. I'll see you soon in another video where we talk about picking designs for blocks made up of multiple shapes. Happy quilting.